Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today our topic about politics and for sure it's going to be about uh, religion at the same time. Uh, as you see in the title, we are talking about a person whose name is Jamal Khashoggi, which is supposedly uh, people, they say he is a journalist. In fact, most of what you hear in the news have nothing to do with the truth. And as usual, people, they, you know, they take uh, what the news says as it is. First of all, who is this guy? His name is Jamal Khashoggi. He is originally a Turkish man, descended from a Turkish family who live in Saudi Arabia. And he worked for a long time in many um let us say uh, agencies some of them supposedly they are uh, media agencies and that's why they say he is a journalist but this is not really the truth we will go for that later this person supposedly last week he went to visit uh, the the saudi embassy which is his embassy because as we say he is a saudi national because he needs some papers for his marriage and then he went inside the embassy and his fiance was outside and then the guy never came back to speak to his fiance and since then tons of a story merged to the point you know things became so really weird and full of fictions and horror movies the guy he went you know inside then uh, a team of 15 people get in and then they killed him and then they cut him pieces and they throw his meat to the cats i mean how in the world they got this information obviously this is nothing but a you know absolute lie i mean he might be killed might be but i mean they cut him pieces and all of those things so the media is carrying out a lot of information which is no way to find out where they got this information from as usual and maybe the guy is not even dead he might be just arrested maybe he just kidnapped well, nobody knows but what is all this smoke around this guy today we heard in the news that uh, uh, lindsey graham who is a senator in usa a, uh, a republic senator he said that the hell will open in saudi arabia if they did if they kill this guy what this guy is talking about are you serious really i mean do you really care <laughs> uh, the french government the british government the uh, everybody suddenly is like in love with this uh, jamal khashoggi i mean this guy became like uh, uh you know the, the guys the prime minister of lebanon he went to visit saudi arabia they arrested him and none of those people move suddenly this guy and at that time, nobody even knows he's alive or he get killed. Now, this guy suddenly became the most important, and this guy, Lindsey Graham, is going to open the door of hell in Saudi Arabia. First of all, nobody is a servant for the Saudi as much as those who attack Saudi Arabia. Or let us say they claim that they are going to do a lot of things against Saudi Arabia. We will open the door of hell. If this is a true, yeah, yeah, we will say. Just count on my words. We will say. You will never do anything because you are a potato and you get paid by them. All of those who they are attacking Saudi Arabia today. You see, the first job I get during the time I was uh, doing my uh, uh, law degree, it was in a newspaper, and I mentioned that before many times. I used to do to work in the correcting the, the Arabic grammar and etc. And every day I have to read the newspaper, all of it. But not only me, we are a team, you know. And you know, I noticed that at that time, for like a few months, they are attacking the president of Al Qazafi, the the Al Qazafi, the president of Libya, almost for three months, non-stop, every day an article against him, every day. And then suddenly the newspapers start writing articles about how amazing he is, how wonderful he is, how beautiful he is. He is the best of mankind. It's like Muhammad. And then later I learned that they receive a check from the 
Libya and Libyan embassy and because of that they changed the direction of writing and this is how it is in the in the Western media Washington Post uh, you know New York Times New York Times yesterday they post something in a Twitter they took it back because they said oh we noticed that there's no proof of what the claim is saying it's just a claim so we decided to obviously the Saudi they contacted them they said what do you want the check is in the way all of those are nothing but dogs barking asking for some bones so we are going to attack you unless you send us a check I mean come on we did not pay us for long so it is an opportunity to blackmail the Saudi who by the way they are criminals I'm not saying they are good don't think don't think I'm defending them no 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 but I'm saying all of them they are from the same kind all of them are the same kind when they want they remember human rights when they want they forget about the human rights Syria and Yemen both our countries are destroyed disappear from the map almost and nobody uh, care you are worried about a guy who go inside the embassy the ambassador of USA was killed in Libya and from the movie or the video we saw which is which is recorded by the terrorist hundreds of fighters burning killing the American inside even swimming in the swimming pool they recorded themselves as swimming in the swimming pool those terrorists then the American they get us one guy just one guy that's it from all the terrorist groups you get me one guy he's the guy who did everything nobody is moved by the death of an American ambassador who why so why this guy is so important this guy he is a very important figure for a very simple reason he is a double agent intelligent he is not what they say he is not a journalist he have nothing to do with journalism journalism was a cover for his business first of all this is one of the most close friends to the terrorist Osama bin Laden very close friend personal relationship and everybody know that this person is a considered person or let us say considered as a leader of the Muslims Brotherhood and he defend them everywhere he go actually he made an article that says the hate of America and the West for the Muslims Brotherhood make them do a lot of mistakes this guy have nothing to do with journalism and what happened in the Saudi embassy it's normal to happen simply he is an intelligent officer who may be involved in killing many assassinating money many people uh, involving in war trade business of weapon you know all kind of uh, crimes and now suddenly he became a journalist who is a hero I found this article just now actually it is in spectator.us what the media are not telling you about Jamal Khashoggi what uh, what is the media not telling us you know you can read really but it's still in the in those articles not much of information but there is enough information to get the idea that this guy is a mafia guy intelligent guy he worked for many agencies he worked with al-qaeda he's a friend for al-qaeda he have a very dirty hands with al-qaeda he have very dirty hands with many crimes he defend many criminals in the Middle East who they do mass murders and actually he was defending the Prince the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia about even attacking Yemen not long time ago but this guy is the same as many they say something when they are facing the West and they say something when they are facing the East which means they are as all double agent they have two 
faces at least of if not many faces he is a Muslim Brotherhood when he is with the Muslim Brotherhood he is uh, you know liberal when he is writing in Washington Post he is against liberalism when he's writing in Arabic he is against uh, anyone who uh, you know asks for freedom uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, he wants Islam to be implanted always in Saudi Arabia, and we believe Islam is the best solution. He is one of the you know very very uh, involved in the attack in Saudi Arabia in 9/11. As you see, even here it says. Uh, you see, let us see here. They are talking about Ibn Salman, etc. And then, worse from the royal point of view, was the Khajiqji had a dirty a dirt on the Saudi links to Al Qaeda before 9 11 attacks. He had a beef friend, he, he had a beef friend, Osama bin Laden, in the 1980s to 90s, which means more than 10 years in Afghanistan and Sudan. while uh, uh, Etc. His jihad against the Soviet Union. So he was a, obviously he was a working as an agent, uh, maybe even involved with the CIA, and he is used heavily by them to uh, to to do jihad against the Soviet Union. At the same time, he was employed by the Saudi intelligence service to try to pursue, persuade bin Laden to make peace with the Saudi royal family. So he was a you know, negotiating man. The result, Khashoggi, was only non-royal Saudi who had uh, a beef on royals. So anyway, you can read the rest of it. You know, you can, uh, I will post the article for you. This guy have nothing to do with journalism. He is heavily involved in all the crimes done in the name of Al-Qaeda. He used even to collect, as you see here, he is a sponsoring, he is boyfriending Osama bin Laden, he defend them, and he's trying, he, he did his best to make a, uh, to make a deal between the Saudi and Al-Qaeda uh, in order to make the Qaeda, don't say that the Saudi are kuffar and they are, they are okay. As simple as that. Uh, the Saudi may have worried that Khashoggi had become a U.S. asset in Washington in 2005. Senior Pentagon official told me of ridiculous plan that had to take the Saudi out of Arabia. As was rage post 9-11, it involved establishing a council, selected Saudi figure in Mecca, to govern the country under U.S., which means control. So the Saudi, they were there's a plan for this guy to be used by USA for something, and we do not know what that exactly. And as you see, this guy is. I mean, why this guy is so important for the American? You know, who is he? Why he is even getting a job in Washington Post? Is he like a, did he graduate from university in journalism? No. Is he really a journalist? No. Or did he really do any field report in his life? Never. I mean, what, what, how, how, did, how this guy became a head of an, a newspaper suddenly overnight? I mean, did, shouldn't you start from zero? <laughs> overnight, he is a head of a newspaper in Saudi Arabia. So, what they are telling you about this guy have nothing to do with the truth. This guy, he have a lot of enemies. And he is involved with many dirty stuff. He have nothing to do with journalism and he is not a journalist. He is involved with Al-Qaeda, he is involved with ISIS, he is involved with Muslim Brotherhood, he is involved with CIA, he is involved with the Saudi intelligence. All his work have nothing to do with journalism. But yet you will not find a single news speaking about him, except they are saying he is a journalist. All of them. This is Al Jazeera, a newspaper, Al Jazeera, you know, the terrorist organization, and owned by the Prince of Qatar. 
they have his article wide in the top in Arabic Khashiqji al-alim al-alam al-arabi yu'ani jarra'a akhta'a amerika bihaqqi al-muslimin in this article he's attacking America he's attacking, attacking USA and he's saying all the Arab world are suffering because the mistakes of America against the Muslims Brotherhood here Jamal Khashoggi is a Muslim Brotherhood in this article but Jamal Khashoggi in Washington Post he is a liberal <laughs> here is a Muslim Brotherhood <laughs> all right He said in this article that the Arabian world is suffering because USA did not take action. You know, here to says like he did not do like uh, it, it, it took it easy against the 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 queue against democracy, which came with the Muslims Brotherhood in Egypt. This is his statement. So. Khashoggi claim that USA made a huge mistake when they did not sponsor and support the Muslims Brotherhood in Egypt when more than 30 million Egyptians went in the street against the Muslims Brotherhood. Jamal Khashoggi is asking America, or he wished that America, We'll go and take all our airplanes and our marines and invade Egypt to force the Egyptian to be subdued to the Muslims Brotherhood terrorist group. In the rest of the article, he claimed that by destroying the Muslims Brotherhood, is destroying democracy and is going to guarantee that all Arab will live under dictatorship and corruption forever. Jamar Khashoggi now claim that the Muslims Brotherhood, who their logo is, which means prepare for them their weapon to kill them all, as the Quran said. Prepare for them your horses and your weapon. To who? To the kuffar to kill us. He claimed that by destroying the, the regime of the Muslims Brotherhood in Egypt, we destroyed democracy. As simple as that. But in Washington Post, this guy is a journalist. He is the sheep. He is very peaceful. You know, this guy, he's, he's saying it clearly, go and kill all those who goes against the Muslims Brotherhood. Then he continues saying, destroying the Muslims' brotherhood will means the continues of the reasons of revolutions and extremism and refugee. You see how he connect things? So you have one of two solutions according to Jamal Khajokshi. Either you join his organization, which is the Muslims' brotherhood, or you choose the other side, which is the continues of revolution, ISIS and Al-Qaeda, extreme, and refugee. I mean, that's it. So now Jamal Khashoggi is telling you what you should do. You should support the Muslim brotherhood. And this is exactly what the filthy Obama, he did. If you go back on time, you will see that when more than 30 millions went in the street against the Muslims Brotherhood in Egypt. The first one to send the warning to Egypt that they cannot take the Muslims Brotherhood, it was Obama, who is himself a member of the Muslims Brotherhood organization. Yeah, the filthy Obama. Obama is a filthy man for me. It's disgusting. He is a snake. Obama is a Christian with the Christian, Muslim with the Muslims, Jew with the Jew, atheist with the atheist. What is more filthy than this? You can be. You tell me.
go right now and search in prophet Google peace upon him that Obama he was the first to warn Egypt regarding the revolution against the Muslims Brotherhood he was the first to support the Muslims Brotherhood government and he was the first to support them when the new regime took off the president in, in order in, to the point even he started putting sanctions on them And you will see that the plan of Obama is in total agreement with Khashoggi. You see, before I made uh, videos, I don't know if you remember. Let me maybe, maybe I should explain again a little bit. Give me a second, please. All right. This is the Middle East map. Khashoggi as a Muslim Brotherhood and Obama as a Muslim Brotherhood members. They were able to convince the stupid American. And sorry, I have to say the stupid American. Who they are in office because, you know, Obama, yes, he is the president. He is a Muslim Brotherhood. But he cannot say I'm a Muslim Brotherhood do this for me so he have to convince them somehow that this is the best solution so what is the solution the solution is exactly as Jamal Khashoggi he said which is exactly proven to us that the plan of Obama is the same plan of Jamal Khashoggi which is the plan of the Muslims Brotherhood the Muslims Brotherhood they presented themselves as the solution against all terrorism happening in Europe in America in the West in the East and the solution is easy you make us control the Middle East right now Turkey is controlled by Muslim Brotherhood eighty million people are under the control of Muslim Brotherhood by the help of Obama the Muslim Brotherhood they were able to take Egypt another 100 million under the control of Muslim Brotherhood by the help of Obama before Egypt the Muslim Brotherhood controlled Tunisia by the help of Obama and here you need to remember what happened to the US ambassador in Libya he was killed right why he was killed if you go and do some search you will find that Hillary Clinton from all the people of Libya she met only with one person who is the leader of the Muslims Brotherhood in Libya I mean does it sound fishy for you from all of Libya she met only one person he is the head of the Muslim Brotherhood why because the plan is we will make Libya under the control of the Muslims Brotherhood. And this is why the U.S. Embassy's ambassador was killed because they were supplying the Muslim Brotherhood with weapon secretly. And other terrorist groups, they were fearing that the Muslim Brotherhood, by having those weapons, they will be superior and they will take over. So they decided to attack the embassy and kill the ambassador to stop this. And they were successful. They started the war in Syria because everybody knows that the major force in Syria of Islam is the Muslims Brotherhood. And Obama, he thought, in less than two months, Syria will fail into the hand of the Muslim Brotherhood. Guys, do you see the map now? Are you getting the map? I think you are getting the idea what they are doing, what I'm trying to do, right? Do you see it? Jordan now as we speak 
is more than 90% of it is Muslim Brotherhood. This is Jordan. It will take, it will take less than two hours for the Muslim Brotherhood to take over Jordan if USA agree. All is in the hand of USA. So now if we can do all of this, we will have a huge state controlled by Muslim Brotherhood, Turkey, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Libya, and Tunisia. But hold on, the story is not there. We are not done yet. The Saudi, they discover a plan of the Muslim Brotherhood to take over Saudi Arabia. And they were growing so big in Saudi Arabia. And if they did not discover it, Saudi today, as we speak, is going to be under the control of Muslims Brotherhood. So look what we have now. We have a huge Islamic state. You see, many, many years ago, before ISIS, I was in radio show, you can go and listen to it, it's still there, and with the brother Osama Dakdok, he have a radio show. And I said to Osama, Obama will not leave until he established Islamic State. I received an email from one of you saying, I could not believe that you said that at that time when nobody even imagined such a thing to happen. But the Islamic State I was talking about, it was not about ISIS. It is about the Muslim Brotherhood. What happened is what not expected. What is not expected? And remember here, Qatar already, the, Muslim, the, the Prince of Qatar is a Muslim Brotherhood. Then Imarat, they find out that the Muslim Brotherhood, they are trying to take over their small country. So look at this map. They are almost a swallow the whole Middle East. What is left? I mean, what is left literally? But what happened? that the Saudi did discover a conspiracy by the Muslim Brotherhood against them to take over the country. So what they did, immediately the Saudi, they announced the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist group. So it's not allowed in Saudi Arabia to be a Muslim Brotherhood and they start arresting whoever is a Muslim Brotherhood. Number two, they flood Egypt with a lot of money, the Saudi money, in order to sponsor any movement against the Muslim Brotherhood and they were successful and Egypt kicked out the Muslim Brotherhood from the government and they replaced them with the new regime which is by the leader of uh, Egypt now a Sisi Imarat did the same Imarat discovered that the Muslim Brotherhood is trying to take over their country so they did arrest everybody imagine from almost 25 as I remember, a, a minister in Emirat, about seven to eight of them, they were Muslim Brotherhood, including the Minister of Education. Imagine how powerful they are in the country like this. I mean, from, from a government, small country like this, seven ministers are Muslim Brotherhood? Yes. They became so powerful to the point they are going almost controlling Emirat. So if they were able to control Saudi Arabia, imagine how much money is that too. And Emirat, imagine how much money they are too. And Qatar is in their hand and Turkey is with them. Erdogan is going to be the caliphate of the Muslim Brotherhood. And this was the plan. But what happened in Saudi Arabia and in Emirat, that the two regimes, they were able to discover the conspiracy against them, destroy, big deal, their plan. And then another surprise happened. That in Syria, where everybody was expecting that the Muslim Brotherhood will take over the country and you terrorist groups they were they were more attractive to the young Muslims which is ISIS and Al-Qaeda and they are for sure a lot more attractive because they kill more so here in Syria Al-Qaeda and ISIS both they were growing together side by side So instead of having Muslim Brotherhood controlling Syria, we have 
Al Qaeda controlling big deal of it, and then ISIS controlling more than maybe sixty to eighty percent of the country. ISIS. Same in Libya. After the attack in the embassy, the U.S. embassy, the Libyan, the plan to Libya to make it Muslim Brotherhood changed to be ISIS, and ISIS was growing so fast there. So now they lost, with the new change, they lost Egypt, they lost Libya, and Syria is out of their hand. So the dream of Obama to establish an Islamic state did not come to exist. And the plan was very simple. After we make all those countries Muslim Brotherhood, then we will attack Israel. As you see, Israel will be a small, tiny, little dot in the middle. Imagine if those, those country all became one army, and all of them, they have one economy, and all of them, they have all the oil, Libya oil, even Egypt have a lot of gas and oil, Saudi Arabia, Emirat, Jordan, Syria, and Turkey. We are talking about almost more than 300 million. All of them, in one day, they decide to attack Israel. And then the Caliphate Erdogan, he is going to announce himself the Caliphate of the Muslims in the world, and then the empire will grow. The rest will join. That was the plan of Obama. And he convinced the stupid American, as usual, that if we make the Muslim Brotherhood ruling, then the terrorists will not find an excuse to make people say, oh, you know, they don't allow us to, to build Islamic State. Here we go, you have Islamic State. But in fact, the Muslim Brotherhood their logo is What is that? I prepare for them whatever you can of your horses and your weapon to kill them. Who? Us. This is the logo and this is the, the flag of the Muslim Brotherhood. Actually, their flag is two swords and that verse from the Quran. So, Jamal Khashoggi is a very important figure. For he is a Muslim Brotherhood. He is the arm of the Muslim Brotherhood in America, who is promoting establishing an Islamic state run by the Muslim Brotherhood. And this is why you see actually here, you see that this is a Jazeera TV, a Jazeera website. They are promoting his ideas because Qatar, who owns a Jazeera, the Prince of Qatar, is a Muslim Brotherhood. So look here. Destruction of a Muslim Brotherhood is a reason for continuous of evolution and extremism and, ref and, and refuge, which means refugee. Here, he said, which is funny, he said that the administration of Muslim Brotherhood, of, uh, sorry, of Barack Obama, it was not sure about the Muslim Brotherhood, or let us say it was worry, which came to the leadership in Egypt after the first free election in the country. Obama, he did not take any strong decision to refuse the queue against the elect president who is the Muslim Brotherhood. Obama was wrong. He lost a golden opportunity to change the history of the Arabian world. So Khashoggi, he is taking the side of the Prince of Qatar, of all the Muslim Brotherhood, and they are wondering what to stop Obama from taking a strong action. And what they mean here, by the way, when you say, like, I mean, what, what, okay, what Obama will do exactly, what do you want him to do? Obviously, they are talking about doing an invasion. Obama will announce that you have 24 hours, either you put the president back or we will invade you. And for sure, I guarantee you all the Muslim Brotherhood, they will worship Obama forever if he do that. But Obama, he cannot convince his people to do so. It's not that easy. You see, the problem with the, with the uh, Middle Eastern mentality, and I am a Middle Eastern, they look at America as it is one guy deal. 
Okay, we have now a Muslim in the White House. His name is Obama. So he will control the White House. You, it doesn't work this way. America have many. It's like the, the authority is divided between Congress, senators, and president. President alone cannot go to war. He can make a like short hit strike, but he has to go to the Congress in order to go for war. And this is exactly what happened when Obama was trying to go to war in Syria against the Syrian regime so he can put the Muslim Brotherhood on the office. He could not get in a vote to go for war. Otherwise, he was going to do it. And he wanted to do it. And this is the plan of the Muslim Brotherhood. And then he said, look what he said. Guys, here you will notice why this guy is kidnapped by the Saudi. By here he says, by being obedience or subdued to the administration of Saudi Arabia and Emirat, him and many of his administration. So now. Here, we will see that Jamal Khashoggi showing frustration how Obama he do that. Wondering how he allowed the Saudi and the Emirati control his decision not to go and take an action against the regime in Egypt to support the Muslim Brotherhood. Obviously, this is an article written by a person who is not only he is a Muslim Brotherhood, he is in love with the Muslim Brotherhood. And by the way, for those who do not know, in case you do not know, Osama bin Laden is a Muslim Brotherhood. Az Zawahiri is a Muslim Brotherhood. The Caliphate of ISIS is a Muslim Brotherhood. The head of Al Qaeda in Syria now, he was an ex Muslim Brotherhood. All of them, they are Muslim Brotherhood. All those, the, 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 the babies of the devil, all of them, they graduated from one organization. It's called the Muslims Brotherhood. And this is the guy everybody is crying for his soul. Oh, Jamal Khashoggi, he is a decent, you know, man. He is a journalist, a criminal, the Saudi. They killed him. How dare you? This guy is 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 a is a disaster. The plan is in the front of us. It's just in one article. All this article is about how we should support the Muslim Brotherhood to take over Egypt again. We should correct that. And look, when we go back a little bit here, when he's saying, Because the United States do not like the Muslim Brotherhood, it is the, re the real reason or the base reason for all, you know, let us say, um, uh, all the trouble is in the Arab world. I mean, why the Muslim Brotherhood is so important in the, in the Arab world? Who are they, those people? Why Jamal Khashoggi, suddenly, who is a they, they, you know, you see, the funny about them, they speak that this guy is not extreme Muslim, but the fact he is an extreme Muslim, he is, he's asking us to implement an Islamic regime and establish Islamic state all the way from Turkey, all the way through Syria, through Jordan, through Egypt, through Saudi Arabia, through Qatar, through Emirat, through Libya, all the way to Tunisia, and even they will take Morocco. To establish a caliphate, and yet, they are saying that this guy is a journalist. Just to remind you about who is the Muslim Brotherhood. Do you remember before a president, his name is As-Sadat? Anyone remember? Let me try to find a picture.
I mean, how those people even accept it to be allowed to have a party? Those people they killed live on TV. The president of Egypt because he signed a peace agreement with Israel. In the 6th of October, 1981, they jump in the stage and they slaughter live on air the president of Egypt for a very simple reason, for he agreed to have a peace agreement with the Jews. How the Muslim Brotherhood even allowed to function in this in Western countries. And I don't want to count for you how many people get killed by the Muslim Brotherhood organization in Iraq, in Syria, in Egypt, everywhere. How many churches they burn, how many Christians they were killed. Just yesterday, the court in Egypt sentenced 17 of the Muslim Brotherhood into execution because they did bomb a lot of the churches those are the Muslim Brotherhood their history is history of blood they killed many 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 people and they killed before this president another president his name is Jamal Abdul Nasser And they attempt to kill many, many people, many presidents. Syria live in war between the government and the Muslim Brotherhood for years and years. So to make it short, Jamal Khashoggi is not what those people, they say to you that he is a journalist. This guy is a worm. He is intelligent agent, Al Qaeda agent, ISIS agent. He is an agent for every branch of evil in the world, involved in many crimes in the world. And it's enough that he defend the Muslim Brotherhood to understand who is he and what he presents. This is the picture is exist in this website, so I'm, I have nothing to do with it. You know, it's like a ghost. You know, they're trying to say to you, I mean, this guy, there's no face there. It's like a ghost. This is Jamal Khashoggi. It's not what they say to you. What a journalist. <laughs> what a journalist. <laughs> uh, you know. And then you will see the, uh, a senator like Lindsey Graham, who is a hypocrite man. This guy, he is yesterday he was attacking Trump like hell, and today he is defending Trump like hell. You know, those people who have no, let us say, loyalty, simply they have no loyalty. They are businessmen, you know. And always this guy he defend the saudi but now because he want to prove that he is not the servant of the, the of the royal family of saudi arabia he want to say okay if he, if they did that i'm going to open the hell of them we will see just count in my word let us see what they will do they will do nothing all those who they are barking we will do this is you will see all of them they will do nothing even if they found evidence even if they found a video even if they got witnesses even if the crown prince he said i killed him and i cut him pieces by my hand they will do nothing for a very simple reason all of them they get paid by saudi arabia and the one who control the salary is the boss who care who live who die all of those they are seeking extra money so we attack you we blackmail you and we threat you we will do this and that so you will send us a check and as soon the check arrive we are going to forget about it i mean is this is the first guy kidnapped and killed by any government 
the Saudi government, they kidnap even Saudi princes from Europe. And nobody talk about the princes. Imagine from the, from the royal family, they kidnap them. They kill them. And nobody dare to say anything. What are you talking about? And why didn't they are some place the money? I mean, you see, the BBC one day, the BBC, everybody think that the BBC, and this is the funny about Western, they think like when I say BBC, BBC said, Okay, BBC is supposedly a government-owned news agency by the British government. But do not what they do not know that the BBC was running for many, many years by the Saudi. And what happened? I mean, how did BBC even run by the Saudi? Why? Why a country like in, like England? Why even they need a foreign country to sponsor a radio station? I mean, this is a crazy. You cannot afford you, British government, all the money you have, all the wealth you have. You cannot afford the salary of a bunch of guys. Once upon the time, BBC made a mistake. They invited and they hosted an interview with an opposition to the Saudi government regime. And because they did that, the Saudi called the second day and they told them, you know what? Forget about our sponsorship and we will not pay you a penny from now on. The BBC Arabic closed overnight. They told all the employee, go home, no work here. And this is how Al Jazeera opened. Al Jazeera, the Prince of Qatar, who is a Muslim Brotherhood, when the Saudi, they told the BBC that all your employees are not going to be paid by us no more. And the BBC, they inform all the employees that you are fired for a very simple reason. We are going to shut down because our government will not pay and we paid. We are paid by the Saudi. Al Jazeera was not really established yet. The Prince of Qatar, he sent letters to all the journalists who work in BBC Arabic and he invited them to sign a contract with a new TV station that did not start yet. It's called Al Jazeera. And he took them all, and all of them start working in Al Jazeera. It was a golden opportunity to the Prince of Qatar to have and to move all the trustworthy names for those Arab who listened to the BBC for a long time, thinking that the BBC will tell the truth because this is owned by the British. Hello, but the fact is owned by the Saudi, run by the Saudi. And now today the BBC Arabic name changed to be Al Jazeera TV. Same employees, same people. This guy has nothing to do with journalism. He is an intelligent officer involved in many crimes, as many evidence says. Defend the Muslim Brotherhood, force Islamic Caliphate on the Christians in the Middle East. He wants the Muslim Brotherhood to control all the people in the world, including the Middle East. But he claimed in the front of the Western, that he is sponsoring just Muslims regime in Muslim countries. But the fact the Muslim Brotherhood have a target to rule the whole world. This is why they have branches everywhere in the world, including USA, including Switzerland, including Germany, including etc. And actually, in case you do not know, the grandson of the Muslim Brotherhood founder, Um, let me try to find not long time ago this guy he was doing live broadcast and I tried to talk to him but because he have a lot of crowd I don't even he notice my text to him I challenge him to debate me or maybe he saw it but he ignored it I'm not sure Uh,
if you notice here with me this is April 9 2017 France expelled the grandsons of Muslim Brotherhood found founder a woman accused this man of rape and she proved it she was able to prove it another woman she jumped and made another ac accusation another woman she jumped and make another ac accusation and then all the women who accuse this man of rape they get it threatened by the Muslim Brotherhood that to be killed and their family will be destroyed and they will disappear so you live in Europe you think you are safe but here we go you have a Muslim Brotherhood leader you go with him in a court for any reason whatever the reason is the second you do that they start to threaten you they will kill you and I believe that those women now are under police protection otherwise for sure they will kill them and even they threat them they before they kill them they will rape them and now I think there's four or five women they accuse him of rape so like the number is growing and all of them they have a proof of what happened not like this woman who accused this guy 36 years ago he tried to rape her who cannot remember even the place who was there you know what where the house she remember nothing stupid people this guy because he is the grandson of the Muslim Brotherhood he was preparing himself or actually he is already to be the spiritual guidance of the Muslim Brotherhood all over the West and even they gave him a job in very fancy universities just to be to be close to the Muslim Brotherhood you know like those West, Western you know and I'm, I'm speaking here about Western government I will not be surprised if this guy himself is an agent for some Western government because they will use him they knew how important he is for the Muslim Brotherhood and why he live in Switzerland why this guy even when the Muslim Brotherhood took over Egypt did not even go and live in Egypt he will go now Muslim Brotherhood taken over why don't go there why they are keeping him in Europe what is the point of him to stay in Europe why the first Islamic Muslim Brotherhood is started in Switzerland or Belgium why they need one there why they have and they open the branches in every city in Europe because the plan is to take over you see there is a picture in in, in my Facebook page let me go there I want to show it to you in the banner actually of my page there <clears throat> All right. This is the picture. I don't know if you know who is this guy. This is his name is Golan. He is right now in USA and he is wanted by Erdogan. But who is this guy? This guy is the boss of Erdogan. He is the one who made him a president. Look what this guy he said. He is the spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in Turkey. And right now he is in Pennsylvania, USA protected by your SA CIA why they are protecting him because they are using him as a tool to threat Erdogan anytime you play games with us we take you we'll replace you with this guy look what this guy he said this is the plan of the Muslim Brotherhood you must move in the arteries of the system without anyone noticing your existence until you reach all the power centers you must wait for the time when you are complete and conditions are rip until we can shoulder the entire world and carry it 
Do you see it? It's simple. This is the plan. We go inside the system of USA. Obama, he put the Muslim Brotherhood. He built them a, a little tiny mosque for them inside the White House, a prayer room. And he start having a Muslim Brotherhood counselor. Even the Muslim, even the council of Obama, the Muslim one is the Muslim Brotherhood. You believe it? I mean, do you see how much they are deep in, in, in the Western system? They are? How they can reach the White House? They are not only like going there to immigrate. No, no, no. They are in the White House. They are in the head. They are going to rule you. The stupid, naive American, they voted for Obama. They thought they are voting for an American president. But the fact he is a Muslim Brotherhood agent. And this is the plan. We move in. Nobody should notice. Nobody should notice you. They should not even notice your existence. You are not even exist. You are, yes, sir. Whatever you go, you say, yes, sir. You have no opinion. You have nothing. Until one day, the condition is ripped, which means this government is collapsing. The country is weak, and we are strong. You must wait until for the time when you are complete and the condition is ripe the fruit is ripe is ready to be eaten it's not hard we can eat them we can swallow them this is what happened in turkey and this is the theory of this guy this is how he made erdogan a president erdogan when he established his party he signed a paper in the front of the regime at that time saying that his party will not be a religious party and will not be involved with religion because remember at that time turkey was a secular so he signed this paper to say we, we are not exist as muslims no we are not you know we are going to be you know a, a secular party you see i'm not calling my party a muslim brotherhood so we will make them believe that we are not even exist. We will make them believe that we are not dangerous. We will make them believe that we are not here. I mean, why you want to worry about someone who does not exist? Until one day, the system is weak, collapsing, and we can shoulder it. We are strong enough to take over. And look what he said. He didn't say we wanted to control Turkey. This guy is a Turkish guy. Did you ask yourself, why he said until we can shoulder the entire world what what entire world he's talking about what he's talking about the muslim brotherhood he cannot shoulder the whole world but the muslim brotherhood organization who have a branch in every city in the world in hong kong in china everywhere you can imagine for sure in china they are very limited but they are causing a lot of trouble to the chinese government too this is the plan their plan is not to establish an islamic state in egypt or in morocco no 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 they want to control france they want to control switzerland they want to control belgium they want to control all western countries and all the world in general but in order to do that, you have to move in all your weapon without anyone noticing your existence. Not only like don't make noise. No, no. Nobody should notice that you are even exist. You are a person who say yes to everybody. You are obedience. You are nice. You are kind. It's like, you know, a stupid idiot he decided to grow a, a snake in his house why because the snake was very kind i mean it's, uh, it's have soft skin the skin of the snake nice and she round herself around you and maybe you feed her on mice every day and you play with her every day but at the end of the day the snake is a snake maybe today the plan is not to kill you yet, but 
the plan will come and this is exactly the plan of the snake can anyone ask can anyone ask like uh, Lindsey Graham and or Trump to tell me why even this guy is in USA and why he is protected by the USA the answer is very simple he is a big threat you see Erdogan he arrested more than 80,000 members of the organization of Golan I mean 80,000 this guy he have 80,000 members arrested in the army in the police in the judges in the teachers in the post office 80,000 how this guy is getting 80,000 this guy he have a schools he have organization in all western countries he have universities run by him he is a beast and right now as we speak just we, we i saw the news in the other day that the bodyguards of golan in pennsylvania they shot because she shot shots in air or something because somebody was trying to pass the fence why does guy have a bodyguards i mean who is he that usa allowing him to have security guards all over and how he can afford it simply he is extremely filthy rich by his organization which obviously according to the turkish erdogan who is a terrorist himself they are they are you know imagine when erdogan he said those people are terrorists but this is his boss and he is from the same organization so what happened the kingdom of the devil divided and now erdogan he seek the head of this man to kill him because this is the only threat he have right now in turkey this is the only guy he can take him off easy and the second you say i am from the followers of golan you will be arrested immediately in turkey and for sure after you are they arrest you nobody knows what will happen to you the funny that Erdogan is worried about Jamal Khashoggi when there's tens of thousands of people in Turkey disappear and nobody knows where they go after they've been arrested just because they are supporting this man so I wanted to share this video with you guys just to give you a little bit of education about and put some lights on it because you see we are coming from the Middle East and we see things differently and we got more let us say we we live the reality you live the news and there's a huge difference between reality and the news reality is something and the news is something else In the news, they say to you that they sponsor and they fight any who fight terrorism. But in reality, they sponsor terrorism. This guy is a terrorist. Who, what is what does this mean? I mean, if this is his quote, what does that mean? What do you mean you want to take over the world? How you want to control us? And why we are hosting him the same question we ask why the French they hosted Al Khomeini the same we ask why uh, uh, England host Abu Qatada and all the terrorists in England England now today is the nest of terrorism In the news, they cry, they say we are, look, he was killed. Everybody is crying. In Fox News, they got a woman. She is so sad. Obviously, the Saudi, they will get away with that. Where are your tears? Where are your tears, lady? When the prince of Qatar, he sent hundreds of millions of dollars to kill the children of Syria, to sponsor ISIS and Al-Qaeda. The disappearance of one man, make you cry and the disappearance of nation the christians in syria they've been slaughtered kidnapped killed raped the yazidi 
This is the guy who made you worry. In Yemen, as we speak now, there's tons of thousands of people. They are dead already. On most of them, they are civilian. And now, this guy, he disappeared. Everybody is worried. The head of the Interpol, the president of the international police, disappeared a week ago. Nobody speak about him. Why? Because the Chinese is the one who kidnapped him. Who dare to say to China, get him back? And this is the head of the international police. <laughs> I mean, the head of the international police is kidnapped. By who? By government. And the rest of government in the world, they don't even say, they don't even dare to say a word. Like, why are you China? You arrested this guy. And the Chinese are not even shy to say he's here. We took him. They don't even care. There's two Christian bishops kidnapped in Syria for more than four years right now. Not even a single TV station in Fox News, in CNN, in the BBC. Nobody speak about them. Who care? I mean, who care? They are Christian bishop. Let them die. Let them slaughter them like sheep. But this guy is important for us. Trump talk about him. Lindsey Graham talk about him. The Crown Prince of England will talk about him. Just wait. But then after all the talk, what they will do? They will call the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. They said to him, don't worry, be happy. Good you did. This guy, he became liability. It's We are glad that you get rid of him. The problem always happened when you receive your education from one shelf. And that shelf usually is a TV station. Do you believe what they say to you? And what they say to you have nothing to do with reality. You see, uh, I want to compare the Western journalism to the news, the weather news in the Middle East. And uh, just the way I will explain to you. <clears throat> Uh, in the Middle East, Middle East, let's talk about Saudi Arabia. When, when they want to speak about weather in Saudi Arabia, let us say tomorrow we will have a storm. Okay, tomorrow we will have a storm, bad storm. The Saudi TV, when they report weather to their people, is not the same when American or French or uh, English, they report weather. The topic is the same. Imagine, we are not talking about politics. It's just, it's weather. But just because you change the location and the religion of the location have a huge impact in the weather news. So the Saudi reporter, he have to say the following. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tomorrow, inshallah, if Allah will, we might have a cloud coming from west. If Allah will, please notice, if Allah will. And if Allah will, the speed of the wind is going to be 20 kilometers an hour. If Allah will, please take a note. And if Allah will, we might have rain, which is possible if and only if, for sure, only if only Allah allowed. And maybe if Allah will, we might have a sandstorm coming after that if Allah will. Now, this is the news of the weather. What I'm trying to say to you, ideology always dictates the news. There's no news in the news. What we learn from the weather in you is that if Allah will, shit will happen. Excuse my language. So the news is not about shit. It's about Allah will. 
But the same news in different countries is different news. But both of them speaking about weather. And you think that you are going to watch and use about the weather. But in fact, it is a comedy. The same what they do. When Obama was in the office, Fox News every day, every day, every day, challenging Obama to stand and to attack the Russian. I mean, what in the world? What are you talking about? What do you mean attacking the Russian? Who in the world want to do that? Trump, he took office. They are not asking him to attack the Russian no more. <laughs> you see, Fox News supposedly always defend like they are they are uh, conservative, but it's a joke at the end. All of them they are. You see, I I, I bet you that the one who owns Fox News is the same guy who owns <laughs> CNN. It's you know they, they make always they are looking for customers and control the mind. So you, if you if you run away from this station, we will catch you in that station. But at the end of the day, both of them they are scammers, and both of them they are liars, and both of them don't present the truth. It's ideology and agenda. Control the news you hear, and that will not make it a news no more. That will make it nothing but poisoning. Everything is upside down. Depend on the mood of the title of the one who made the news for you. The victim can be a criminal, and the criminal will make him we will make him a victim. Welcome to Western media. I don't want to give you more headache than this, but I wanted just to share with you, and I'm sure some of you, they are maybe unhappy with what I said, but this is the truth. The truth is ugly. And people don't like ugliness. They like always to see nice of you. You know, they like to imagine, uh, you know, uh, the word is, uh, like women, they see the word as pinky. The men, they see the word as women in bikini and uh, a beach you know everybody have his own image of the world but what you what what you think about the world is nothing to really to do with what what the world is the world we live in is very ugly if you have a penny everybody call you sir if you have a penny you can change if you have money like george soros you can change presidents you can destroy countries you can build countries you can create wars. You can make peace. The world is not a sand and beach. And the ocean is not beautiful as you think. It's full of beasts. And Fox News and CNN is nothing but a beast trying to control your mind. All of them, they lie. Even supposedly, I like Fox News more, but this is depend on what they say because I am not a person who can be eaten by statements. I support the right idea. I don't support a person. So please, always when you receive news, try to investigate yourself and try to search it. Don't be a fruit of a stupidity. Whatever people they say to you, you take it. When I was in Europe, I met with an Italian guy. I was waiting for the bus. So he said to me, where are you from? I said, USA. He said, huh, how is the racist Trump with you? No, no, he said, well, sorry. Uh, what do you think of uh, Trump? Uh, I said, I like him. He said, really? He said, but he's racist. I said, why? Why he's racist? <laughs> he said, this is what they said. <laughs> A guy from Italy who have nothing to do with America. He never been in America. Trump is racist for him. <laughs> I 
don't blame him. I mean, <laughs> everybody, whatever they say about you, they can make you. They, they can make you the Virgin Mary if they want in TV, and they make you. They, they can make you the whore if they want. This is the truth. And now this is exactly what they are doing with this Jamal Khashoggi. They made him like the guy. He is an angel. They are wondering even why he disappear. They are. They are. They are. They have tears. I mean, they are crying for him. I told him why he's racist. He said they want to deport people and Mexican. I said, well, if I go to your country and I stay over uh, over the visa over state, they will deport me. He said yes. <laughs> so, so I said, are you racist? <laughs> he said, uh, I guess no. I said, okay. Well, he was going to deport anyone who isn't legal. There's millions of Mexicans live in USA and they are citizens. And me myself, I'm not even born in USA. I am even a Middle Eastern guy. He said, really? I said, yeah. <laughs> if you go, if you go to any country and you overstay, they will kick you out. They will deport you. It doesn't matter where you go. If I go to Mexico right now and I stay one day more, the police, they, are, they, they, they ask me about my visa. I don't have a visa. They will arrest me and deport me. What does this have to do with racism? Trump is Islamophobic. Why? Because he signed an order that from six Islamic countries they cannot enter USA. This is a lie. He did not say that. And nobody says they cannot enter. All what they say, they have to investigate security before they get in. They cannot issue a visa automatically. And he, it's not him who did that. It was Obama. You see the hypocrisy when Obama he signed the same. This he is Obama is the one who created that order, not the Trump. Trump he just resigned again because it was expired. When Obama he signed it, he is not Islamophobic. When Trump he signed the same paper, he is Islamophobic. <laughs> you know what I mean? So don't don't be a stupid, don't be a foolish, don't go by what they say. You know, like now, why why they are opposing this judge, this poor judge? Because simply they are, you know, they are worried that the conservative they will take over the Supreme Court and they will do whatever they can to stop that. So they they try everything to stop this judge, but there's nothing wrong about him. Then they, we, we we get him and we we try our best. So we wait for the last week because we are out of papers, and now we use this paper because they have this paper from long time ago. But they said to themselves, "We will leave it to the end." And this way, he have to change, and if he change, we will not finish discussion about him in the coming four weeks, which is the election day. And by the election day, we will have a new election and maybe we will win the senators and we will win the Congress. And then we will be the one who will stop Trump from hiring any Supreme Court until he finishes his presidency. This is the plan. Otherwise, I mean, who in the world really? You live in America where American, when they are young, they take drugs. Obama himself, he said he did drugs. Hashish. He said that. They do all kinds of crazy stuff. And now this guy, he drunk when he was 16 years old. And a woman, she accused him 36 years ago that he tried to rape her. And she have no proof. She have no witnesses. And nobody of her friends, even the one she mentioned, agreed to witness that this is not true. She don't remember the date. She don't remember the place. She don't remember the names. She don't remember anything. Who and even how even you allowed her to talk about about this in public because you cannot accuse someone unless you have evidence. Otherwise, any woman she can accuse any any person and any man can accuse any woman. Or is about agenda. Otherwise, who care? And obviously, this woman, obviously, she has mental illness. This woman, she is taking attention. She spoke in front of some of her friends in Starbucks. Oh, yeah, this guy, you know, he tried to rape me. Yeah, what, what? He did? When? 
but she don't want to tell anyone actually she was telling her friends think seeking some attention but those friends they start calling important people congressmen and then senators and then she found herself in a trouble she don't want even this to be in public because the plan is to seek attention in the circle she live in not to go big Oh boy. Be careful if you go in the elevator with the women. I advise you to turn on your camera and start recording because they, she might accuse you 36 years after that you tried to do something to her in the elevator. You never know. <laughs> And she will not remember the name of the building. She will not remember uh, what date or what she. <laughs> oh boy! Oh man! Ah! Oh, oh that mercy! The the world is mad and crazy and stupid and foolish, and it's sick. Some somehow it's really sick. Uh, but anyway, they will try everything in their hand to stop having conservative judge in the Supreme Court because how they can force us to be what they want to serve their agenda they are the same as Islam you have to move in the system without anyone noticing you and tell you are sure you can carry it all the liberals they took over America for more than 40 years 40 years Democrat as controlling the White House. You believe it? 40 years? How that can happen? That's sick. And this is why they are going so crazy because how in the world they are losing ground after 40 years of controlling America, ruled full time 40 years by Democrat. How in the world America is a changing? When we thought it became left socialist country, they thought it's over. They thought that's it. They control America. America is a territory of the socialism. They want us all to be hippies. You know, imagine, guys, how those people they school us about morality. Hillary, she said, "Do you want your kids to hear what Bill, what what his name uh, Trump he said about women?" I mean, look who's talking. Her husband is a is, is a rapist. He's a cheater. She's still with him just because she is seeking a position. He was accused of rape by many women. And now you are talking about this guy. Why? How many women he raped? If men, they speak about men, women in such a way, they are bad. It's mean all the men you ever met, they are bad. And your husband is the beginning of them. This guy is a sex monster. He wants to sleep with all the women around. Any woman he see her around him, she is beautiful. He wants to sleep with her. Not only did it not defend a Clinton victim, Hillary, she made a threat for those women to drop their cases. I hope that this coming election, the Republican, they will win the majority because that will help Trump. And I am praying really that somebody of the Supreme Court, maybe two of them, because you know, there's, there's two of them. One of them I think is 85, 86, and the other one is 80, I think, and one is 70 something. So I am praying that maybe one or two of them, they will resign. And then Trump, he will be able to hire two more Supreme Court. That will be wonderful. <laughs> that will be, I mean, that will be the best about Trump being a president. Two more conservative Supreme Judge. That's it. Those liberals will go crazy. And then we go back to normal where people, they cannot kill their babies. 
and they call it abortion. This is not abortion. This is murder. What abortion? This is a life of a human being. Who are you to take it and destroy it? What if your mom, the one who is defending abortion, what if your mom decided to, to, to drop you in the toilet seat? You will not be exist. Who in the world giving the right for a human being to decide for a human being not to be exist? We pray that American they will be more educated and they will not be victims of the media. Both media, by the way, CNN, Fox News, all of them they are garbage. The Bible is the best way to know what decision you should take. The Messiah, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. As simple as that. Trump is not Saint Trump. He is not a holy Trump. But he is one billion times better than the rest. So we vote for him. There's nobody who have little brain. He will not agree that, you know, we should have a borders where Al-Qaeda and ISIS, not only illegal immigrant. I mean, I'm not worried really about the illegal immigrant. About I'm worried about what if we get like 2,000 from ISIS boarding from Mexico. Aren't you worried about that? Heavily armed, well trained. Nineteen hijackers, they were able to destroy USA economy in one day. All airline at that time, if you remember, they were collapsing. Stock market. Nineteen hijackers. So imagine if they send us two thousand. Why the why the left minded people don't want the border? What does that mean? Why why you left people? Why why Hillary Clinton she have bodyguards? You don't like borders, you don't like walls, right? Why you have a wall around your house and you have tons of guards? They speak about go green, you know, the global warming, but all of them they are driving the most expensive USV, which is 12 cylinder, not even eight. The most heavy special made for them. Which can which which is swallow gas like crazy. Well, you need that car. Don't you want to go uh, go green? Al Gore, he make a speech about global warming in the morning and then he fly his jet, a private jet, to go from place to place. But he is telling us, don't burn fuel while you are taking private jet. SUV, SUV. Yeah. Fancy cars. Expensive cars. They ask you to not to spend much money, but yet Hillary Clinton, she spent $2 million in her daughter wedding. Where she get the money from? How a woman and her husband who work all their life for government servant or service, they can afford to spend $2 million for a wedding party. How you can do that? Somebody work all his life for government. He can just spend $2 million for a party over one night. How much money you have? And where the money is coming from? And then they give us a speeches about they are going to protect the poor. But <laughs> and guys, just to let you, okay, I don't want to change my topic, but just I, I like I noticed something. I don't know if you noticed it with me. The owner of Facebook is left is liberal the owner of google the owner of twitter i mean all of them all, all those big big huge companies who own trillions of dollars they lecture us about protecting the poor i mean why don't give us the money why the owner of facebook he want the billions of dollars is it enough to have 200 million dollars in the account i mean is are you going to spend all this money really 
let us say he have oh, he kept only 200 million dollars how much is going to need him to spend this money to live 300 years 500 years they lecture us about protecting the poor but they are the most rich filthy people in the world They want to fix our economy so we can get better jobs. But we will work for them. <laughs> we will give you a better job, okay? You will work for George Soros. All right? We protect the poor, and we will make George Soros more rich. And we will give you a job as a taxi driver in the company of George Soros. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you for the jobs and the jobs opportunity. We will make you spend your life working for pennies. And we make you believe that you are alive. We live in mansions and you live in a small tiny apartment suffering to do to pay your heating bill. We will force on you what it's called health insurance when you cannot even afford health insurance but they will force you to buy it and that's supposed to protect you and those naive american they think that those people they care for you you see even trump i mean trump he is a businessman he's a rich man what trump he knew about poor people nothing but still for me i have no choice but to support him the system of this country is sick there's two parties and you have to choose one of them like we don't have even a third option if you sponsor a third option you will get nowhere because he will never win but what i like about trump which is proven to me that he is not really from the system of the corruption if you believe if you if you if you remember when trump he was going for for the election in his party all of them they are against him even if that he was elected they were barking at him like dogs john mccain lindsey graham all the garbage because he is not from the system this is not the agreement the agreement is we are going to divide the cake between us democrat and republican but this guy is coming from outside suddenly he's here we bought him we, you know People do not understand what happened, how Trump he won. The Democrat and the Republican, both they agree that we will put Trump go inside the election because he will not make it for the nominee. Then the Democrat, they sponsor Trump in the beginning. They really sponsor him because they wanted someone for sure he will lose. You know what I mean? They they say to themselves if we if we get uh, a, a Cruz he might win if we get etc he might win but this guy nobody will elect him so let us sponsor him so in the beginning the Democrat they were working hard trying to make a Trump win but not to win the election to win the nominee of his party and that will make it so easy to Hillary Clinton to crush him not only to win. They were expecting her to crush him like a piece of chocolate because they thought he would be very easy to crush. So what happened, it was a surprise for both parties. The plan of the Democrat, if you guys, if you go and see, if you remember, do you remember the 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 uh, the hall where where uh, Hillary Clinton she's supposed to make the victory speech? Do you remember how big it is or how huge? Trump he don't have one because Trump himself he was not expecting to win. He don't have a place to go and make an announce victory. They didn't prepare anything. Hillary she have the biggest, amazing space. Tens of thousands will be there, flags all over, decoration. Go and watch it in YouTube. She will come and she will make the speech of victory because she guaranteed a victory. And this is why they wanted Trump to be 
the one who go against her in the election because he's going to be very easy to crush we have a tape of him saying bad things we have news about him saying doing bad things we have women they are going to speak against him we are what we are going to make the russian allegation so before the election day he will be shish kebab this is what they thought but what happened because this guy he said things as it is people love them he's not a sugar coating person he say things as it is and this is why he is winning he is not a politician he don't sugarcoat he said the word as it is people are sick of politician he is not politically correct he speak his mind so we know what this guy is thinking but because he say what he but he say it he don't he don't hide it he's like a he's like a growing kid and this is why he was elected And I believe the coming midterm election, and I hope that the Republican they will make a big victory again because of a Trump. Otherwise, Republican are not really doing good. I mean, who is the doing good? I remember what his name, this guy, which the state. Yeah, they, they made an interview with him. I'm trying to forget uh, to, to remember, sorry, which which state uh, he was, Pennsylvania. No, I think maybe Ohio. The governor of Ohio, imagine how much they betray Trump. Even he asked his supporters not to vote for Trump in the election. Imagine. Same as John McCain, the filthy John McCain. Same as Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham, all of them, garbage. Because he is coming out of the system. He is not in the net of corruption. He is not in the payroll of Saudi Arabia or the, 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 the Prince of Qatar. And this is why I advise you to go and watch the news in the day of election. All, all the liberals news, you will not believe it how stupid it was. They were like, what? Huh? Who? Some of them, they are crying. Some of them, she is holding her boyfriend. The <laughs> Trump, he won. <laughs> Me, myself, I cried, actually. I cried from happiness. I was so happy and I made a video actually in the day of the election about it because I was so happy that Trump he won because it's not about Trump it's about the future of this country the Supreme Court it's about are we going to be exist because I am sure the next step of the liberals are going to close our churches they start already actually in the time of Obama taking down crosses from public places Bibles are not allowed to go in the, to be in the hotel they do step by step and then they kick you out trump he destroyed all their plan because trump from the beginning he made a deal with the christians all those things happened to you before i will delete them and this is what the liberals did not think about they thought the christians are dead yeah they go to church but they don't go and vote America, at the end of the day, is a Christian country. It doesn't matter what they try to say. Churches are full of people. You go to the church, you can't even find a place to park your car. They knew that, but they thought that Christians, they will never listen and go and vote. And obviously, time is changing. Anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. I just wanted to share this, uh, you know, with you. Feel free to download my video and post it in your YouTube if you have a channel about Khashoggi, uh, sharing the information about this person. And please, don't take your news from news agencies. They lie. Everybody have his agenda, and everybody is getting by somebody. And the one who paid the bill for electricity in the news agency is the one who controlled the news. The one who controlled the check and the salary is the one who made the news. It's not even the reporter. It's not the one you see in the screen. They are just toys. They say what is written for them in the electronic screen. They have nothing to do with it. They are just toys. And you are the victim.
if you decide to listen to them and to believe in them thank you very much for being here may the lord bless you and with this i will say good night and good morning for those who they are in asia take care and this is christian prince wish you the best until tomorrow take care bye, -bye.